Hello and welcome to The Rhythm Factory. I'm Eddie C, and together with my co-host Peter D, we're going to bring you in touch with people in and around the music business. This is the podcast that takes you up close and personal. Hi everybody, and welcome to The Rhythm Factory podcast. My name is Eddie C, and to my right is my colleague and co-host, Mr. Peter D. Today's special guest is the one and only Mr. Roger Hopple. Roger is a very well-known session musician, uh, especially in the Amsterdam area, and uh, just, we were just talking with each other, we realized that uh, you used to for a while live in Antwerp as well, uh, I've, and I forgot all about that, <laughs> but uh, with me living in Antwerp nowadays, but uh, anyway, we, we're going to ask you a few questions, man, and see how it's good to see you after such a long time, man, you know, it's uh, about time we start playing together again. It's, it's, it's been a couple. Of, it's actually been a couple of years now. Since yeah, we, yeah. But I don't know. know. I mean, probably uh, fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> no, actually, we did a we did a gig. Um, we did a gig together a couple of years ago for a birthday party. Oh yeah. Remember that was in Amsterdam. That was in Amsterdam. That was in Amsterdam. 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 Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That was a little kind of, but it was a was a, was kind of a strange gig because I don't know. I think uh, the the guy was loaded. Yeah. yeah, and and his daughter was uh, sixteen. Yeah, having a sweet sixteen. That was, and he, uh, sweet, yeah, that was what it was. Yeah, uh, and right. and he just wanted to have a a, 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 a smashing band and a, and a smashing percussion player. <laughs> <laughs> so we called up you, right? That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, I yeah, it was. It was. It was. But anyway, you know, like getting back to you know to our first question, you know, you've been busy in the industry for a long time. I mean, I remember. I mean, I'm, I'm, I got a few years on you, but I mean, because I remember us in, in, back in the days of you checked when you were, you know, your your very young days mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. coming to check check uh, check us out playing with with Tao the Young and yeah. uh, a few of the other guys there at the time. When and uh, Carl, I think Carl Boy was playing with us a lot at that time as well. Yep. And uh, so that was when I I heard you singing, and I thought, man, this guys got to, got to, got it going on, mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. it happening. Fantastic vocals, great keys and stuff. But all those years, you know, you worked with Candy. You've been working. You toured with Rosa King. You, you played with Trench from Osterhout and uh, the whole Amsterdam scene. And you know, until today, I'm still waiting for that solo project to come out. I buddy. know, I know. I, every I time know. I see you, I'm always asking you, when is it coming, man? Yeah. Well, what it is, um, um, it, it's a time question. You know, I'm. Um, um, like you said, I'm doing I'm doing sessions all over the all over the place. Like like, uh, but Amsterdam is my main m m my main uh, yeah. That's the home base. The home base. Right. And um, since I've been doing so many sessions and working in studios and stuff, there's hardly any time left to like really concentrate on my own stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's a pity sometimes. But yeah. I do. Um, I make this little uh, like I think you have a notation. What is what is this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, on my uh, recorder. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, well, but it's like, a, you know, well, a, a memo thing, thing, right? Memo, you know? yeah, and I got recorder. a memo recorder at home. Right. And I just, you know, sometimes put some ideas together, which I have lots of right now. Yeah. So so when there the will be a time... That you'll be able to that empty that box and, and, and cut them on tracks. What I do right now is like, you know, I, I try to... Um, uh, get as many, uh, well, I mean, the people I worked uh, with during yeah. the years, I just want to call them up one day and tell them, like, okay, I'm going to start writing yeah. my own CD, and then I really want to, you know. Well, I'll be, let me know, man. Oh, yeah, you're going to be know. on that CD too, man. Um, we'll be waiting anxiously. Eddie C. song. <laughs> Let's see it coming up. <laughs> Eddie C, what's it gonna be? <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah, one of those songs. No, but it, but I mean, I'm working on it. Yeah, great. Because that's that's good. It, it's it. You should be. But I told you that like ten years ago too. You told me that. Yeah, well, probably next year. Probably yeah, next, next year. year. So yeah, yeah. I know. I know. But get it out there. Whenever it's coming, it'll be definitely oh, yeah. welcome. And uh, yeah, we'll do our part here in the show to get you plugged as much mm -hmm. as we can. You right. Know, right. That's it. Cool. Like you uh, said, Roger, uh, Amsterdam is mainly your your home base. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a lot of sessions there. You play every week in Club Dauphine, yes. I believe. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the Amsterdam music scene and uh, why do you do you choose to be in the Amsterdam music scene and what is the difference between other scenes in the Benelux? Well, first of all, I 
I was born and raised in Amsterdam, so I mean, for me, it was uh, uh, no big deal to go somewhere else. Uh, I started off in a, like a small club called the Malumalo. I don't know if you still yeah. remember that. Malumalo was. I played was there once. You did? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, but it changed because Malumalo was on the. Uh, uh, but anyway, it was on the Leinmansgracht. And uh, they had blues sessions over there, like real blues sessions. And. Um, there was a piano over there and, 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 and my parents, you know, they said, oh, man, I know you want to play somewhere, but, you know, you should, you should join a jam session. I didn't right. even know what a jam session was. <laughs> I was like 17, I think, by that time, 17 or 18. And um, I said, okay. And so they took me to that place, Malou Malou. And, um, and, 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 I mean, they didn't push me on the, on, on the stage, but I mean, I just felt like, oh, man, I... I, I I know this. I, I, I know this music. I, this yeah, is yeah, what I yeah, hear yeah. every day. My, my yeah, father yeah. used to be a, a record comp uh, director from, from, from a record company. company right, right. So uh, and, and and so I had to listen to all those songs. I mean, and, uh, Rob Hoeke and uh, right. Rob Agerbeek. Uh, these, these were like you know real talented uh, boogie woogie <laughs> masters. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I heard the music. I uh, uh, at the Mulu Mulu, and I went like, oh man, I. So so I I just jumped on stage, start playing Boogie Woogie, and people started applauding for me. And I was like, oh, wow, I mean, what is this, you know? So I was totally hooked. Uh, every Monday there was a session. Mm -hmm. uh, event, uh, uh, the owner came up to me and he said, wow, um, maybe you want to have your own session here? I said, cool, you know, so <laughs> I had my own session. Right. And that's where it kind of started. All right. Molo Molo. Then there was this club called Narbova. Yeah. Which remember you remember, of course. Remember, That's we also where uh, Trainche started. Right, uh, exactly. With, yeah. um, she used to come watch us play a lot of times as well. Who? She came to watch us jam. I know, I know. Yeah, so, and uh, 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 and then you had a place called the Korte Golf. Yeah. Um, which, uh, and it, these were all sessions in Amsterdam. And uh, the good thing about it was, like, um, Amsterdam people are, like, open, very open-minded. Uh, uh, and 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 you and you and you can really feel that in their music too, I would say. I mean, when you, I mean, uh, uh, no offense for people from Rotterdam or Eindhoven or Utrecht, but that's a different scene. It's a different scene. And uh, and and since music is a language, you can. Right. I mean, you can. It's a, it's a universal language. It's, it is. So so um and 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 uh, but there is a difference, and I cannot really tell you what the difference is, but uh, I mean, I've been playing with a uh, Jeroen, uh, um, uh, piano player, Jeroen, uh, uh, Michel Beschie, Jeroen Rietberg, and, and, and it's different, but it's a nice approach, it's a different approach, mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, um, it's hard to, to explain what it is really, but it, since, uh, as I said, it's a language, and, and, and we all speak that language, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's a... Uh, well, maybe, maybe I think, uh, my, my experience of working with the musicians out of Amsterdam, especially also from the, the earlier days, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think also because Amsterdam was sort of the first place when musicians came to Europe, because they said, where's Amsterdam? Right, right, well, right. A lot of it had to do, because some of, them, some of the guys wanted to know that was, Holland was still, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the Amsterdam or Holland itself was kind of, a very open-minded country in general, you know. Yeah. Everything was possible there, you know. Yeah. And marijuana was legal, True. especially so a lot of cash from over the states. Maybe what it is, it's more like a family. It's yeah. more a family thing. Mm -hmm. You see, because uh, right now you have the uh, uh, Ladies of Soul with Candy and Trainje and 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 and, and, and Glennis and and Celia right. and and you know they're all from Amsterdam. Yeah, they're, yeah, all, right. they're, they're all, all and they're it's all still family, family. Yeah, and, yeah. and they met each other. Years and years ago, right. and we all know each other. It's like one big happy family. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that is in in Rotterdam or in, in other. I mean, probably they all know each other, but it's not as tight. It's not as not tight. The yeah, Amsterdam well, we scene is a very tight knit scene because I I, I, I can tell you like my friend in Antwerp, they've got a, a small clique of musicians, but it's not really a tight. Most of the musicians are living outside right, right. the area, That's what and it so is. and that and. Everybody in Amsterdam, they're kind of like they're not living too far from each other. It's 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 a regular basis mm -hmm. that they're in contact with each other to perform, and it makes. And then coming back to the jam sessions, yeah. I think these jam sessions uh, took care. Uh, uh, um, that was the reason why a lot of like Trent and Candy and everyone 
went, uh, they they all went to that went to those session, session, right? sessions. I remember, yeah. And that's how they got together. Like, oh, you know, you know, that's yeah. how they formed bands. Yeah, because Candy's dad used to always play at this one jazz club. At the the crew. Yeah, at the crew at that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And I remember playing there with him and uh, Wilbur Little when he was still alive. And, right. And it was like uh, Candy. I mean, saxophone was almost as big as she was. Citadel was there. Yeah, Citadel was there. Uh, uh, Rosa Rosa King was still alive at that time. You know, yeah, which she is, was. Yeah, alive and kicking. She was. <laughs> well, she was actually, which leads leads to the next question. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, Rosa King was sort of the. She, she kind of like triggered that whole jam session scene for for a lot of musicians. I mean, when I came first came home. Was one of the first musicians I worked with in the Amsterdam scene was Rosa, and she had been living here for a while, and mm -hmm. she kind of created that family idea because all the musicians that worked with her, they, they were like a family. Because she, they, they, we were all her kids. She was a school, right? Yeah, that's right. I she, mean, she was a school. That's right. That's the school funny. of Rosa. That's right. And um, uh, you know, legendary, especially among musicians, uh, because I remember when she passed away, that was one of the biggest funerals I had I ever been to. I mean, it was like people were came from everywhere right. to her funeral. You know, you, you worked with her for, you know, quite some time. I know you guys toured all through Europe and stuff. Remember that bushy, big bus she always had. And uh, <laughs> But during the, the time that you toured with her, you, you got a chance to uh, to meet with the Roger Damper, that's the piano player. Robert Damper. Ro Robert, Robert Damper, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. From, uh, that's the piano player from... Uh, Kenny G. Uh, from Kenny G, right. Yes. And I remember, I'll never forget because I remember... Uh, yeah, you were saying, man, I'm going, I'm going to the States, man. Yeah. And you were really <laughs> excited because we kind of like, our paths had kind of crossed the right. gig somewhere. Absolutely. And, yeah. then, and then all of a sudden you were, you, you went to Seattle, right? Was Seattle, it was Seattle, Washington. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And because another good friend of mine who, uh, this was a jazz singer, uh, Gail Pettis, she's a, uh, she got nominated a few years ago for a Grammy uh, in jazz, uh, for a jazz record she did, she would participate on, uh, also from Gary, you know. But while you were there, uh, you you guys had a chance to go into the studio, and uh, I know uh, Lee Oscar is also from out uh, Seattle. There's a lot of very, very good uh, jazz session musicians in general yep. that are that are living living there and performing from out from out Seattle. It's like a second mecca in the states for music. A lot of people don't know that, but it's a lot of good music coming out of Seattle. Crunch. Crunch. Grunge music? What yeah, was it? Grunge, grunge. Yeah, yeah, that was what it was, right, yeah. That was a fantastic place. And that was an adventure because, like you said, I was with Rosa for quite a long time. Right. And, and we played in the Alto yeah, Jazz right. Cafe every Thursday. And and uh, I remember that Kenny G played in the Rai in Amsterdam right. with, uh, with his whole band. Right. And they just wanted to hang out, you know. Uh, like you do when you yeah, when you when you play yeah, yeah. abroad, you just want to go out, hang out House. with musicians. Exactly. And Robert was the one hanging out uh, with uh, I think it was Bruce Carter, the drummer. He mm -hmm. died, but right. but uh, he passed. But uh, and Robert, he came up to me. He saw he saw us playing, and I was just doing one of my songs, I think. And uh, he came up to me after the show, and he said, "Man, do you write your original tunes?" I said, "Yeah, I do write." I didn't even know who he was, and and then he said. Uh, all right, well, do you f feel like co-writing with me? I said, okay, where do you live? I thought he was from Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. No, I live in Seattle, Washington. Okay, yeah, man, we played with uh, Kenny G here in the Rai. I went like, okay, Rai, that's big. Right. Kenny G, even bigger. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, all right, Kenny G, elevator music. I wasn't not really getting into that, but, but, yeah, but, okay. but I went like, okay, and... I said, but, but, but what, what do you want me to do? He said, well, you just have to come over. I'll pay your ticket, and, uh, and we just start working. Right, right. And, and for me, it was not even like, you know, it, it, it was like, first was it like, okay, we're going to go to the States. Right, right. Cool. And, and then Kenny G, do I have to work with him? Or, or what is it, you know? Yeah, and, exactly. and, and, and Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't even have the time to think about it. He just called and said, "Okay, ticket is ticket is there. Uh, you gotta come." Like you know, I think it was three months later. Right, right. And I stayed there for half a year, and cool. I just wrote, wrote stuff with him. And Did you, you you commuted back and forth uh, from Amsterdam to Seattle at one point. Well, what it was, I stayed there for three months. Okay. And then, of course, you're you're, you're you you have to leave. You have to come back. Because you have to come back right, because exactly. of the three month uh, yeah, yeah, deal permit, you have. Right, right. But after that, 
I did another three months. So you know, I, I, so yep. so it was like a half a year altogether, and I learned a lot because Americans are different, are just so much different than. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no but, but I mean that's a like when you play with American musicians, they are a part of you. You know, I mean, I, I, so so I I, I uh, there was a, a drummer, a bass player, a guitar player, me on the keys, and Robert was playing keys, and they were all like there for me instead of like you know uh, 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 they were very much into okay, what do you want? What do you want uh, me to do? I said, well, I mean, you know, you're a drummer and you, you know what to do. No, but what do you want me to do? Okay, I've never thought about it like that because I thought like, you know, musicians are like, you know, you just play and you have fun and you know, when it feels good, it feels good. But they made me realize that they, 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 they told me like, okay, I'm just a fifth of the band. You know, right, we're five right. persons. Exactly. I'll just give you a fifth. And so the, Drummer gave me a fifth, the bass player, the guitar player, the uh, Robert. So we were all like, you know, different parts and right. we made one big part. And I have to admit, like Dutch people, they always want to show off a little bit, you know, like, look what I, look what I can know, do. Look what I can do. And, and, and I'm more into, no, I don't want to see what you can do. I just want to see if you feel it. <laughs> and I have to feel it, you know, right. whatever you play, yeah. if I feel it, man, I believe you. That's Even it. if you sing flat or like, you know, Rosa sometimes had this thing like with her saxophone <laughs> and she could blow like a little flat, yeah. like, you know, uh, and we all were, we were all tuned on 440 scale, you know, yeah, right, right, right. and she was tuned on a f 436 or something, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, always yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So, I, yeah. so I told the guys like, you know, why don't we just tune our, our <laughs> oral <laughs> instruments to... So 436 exactly. then we're in tune with rose right 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 and not the other way around yeah and that yeah. worked that that worked. so you know so yeah i mean rosa was somebody you could really feel right you know I see yeah, yeah. when she sang she, so that was a very important thing i learned from 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 the states from being in seattle right and um uh, next question <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, man. Um, <laughs> when you were you were at a young age, you you quit high school to uh, to join. I was expelled. Um, oh, you yeah, were expelled. Oh, oh well, yes. your website. It's it's it's. Of course, you have been nicer, <laughs> but all right, man. But you joined a, a musical a theater group, the, um, the Malcolms. The Malcolms, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that that's a pretty tough decision if you you have to leave high school and you know you take a chance like that and go on tour. Uh, were you uh, confident enough that you were going to make it as a musician or did you have maybe a backup plan or did you have a plan in mind how to do it? No, no my, my, uh, uh, I was four when I started playing piano. Mm -hmm. I was six when I started playing my first song called In The Summer <laughs> and, 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 and meeting this little mouse and, and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I was, I was, I was... I, felt, I, I don't know what it was, but right. I, 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 I'm, I'm completely self-taught. So, so I, I just started playing piano. And my father, like I said, he was a, a, a director of a, a well-known um, um, record company that time. So he, um, he took records uh, home and he was listening to Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, uh, 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 um, the, soul, the soul, but also the blues and, and jazz and stuff. So I just, as a kid, listened to that music. So you picked it up? I became, picked it up. It came part and got it injected in your veins. We had, a, we had a piano and I've, I, I, I kind of like heard the relation be between whatever I heard uh, from the speakers mm -hmm. and my piano. So I'm like, okay, so... I even played classical stuff. I didn't, even, but but it was all like you know. I just it was listened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. music. I listened to it, right. and I, so that kept me busy for like until I was like eighteen, and 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 I had to make this choice. And my mother and my father, you know, they wanted me to have my my uh, my exam and my uh, yeah, uh, degree. Degree. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. And um, but I was just. Then I thought, okay, well, suppose I have this 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 ticket for like you know t t t t for for whatever job was coming. I knew I was going to be a musician. I was just totally confident about right, it. Right. And and then I remember this day I came back from school 
and I told my mom, I said, well, mom, um, I think uh, I, I, they, throw, they threw me off uh, f f from school. And she said, why? Well, I said, well, I, 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 I had like three weeks off. I mean, I, I, well, I, I didn't show up at school. You didn't show up, yeah. Because I was, I was like <coughs> really um, <laughs> concentrating on my... Uh, oh, music? Not no, really that, not, but, but no, but, uh, driving license. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 because yeah. I had to drive to the gigs, right? And, and, and <laughs> that was more important That's than my That's kind exams. of a plan, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, was, walks, walks yeah, yeah. I was already yeah, making yeah. my plans. And, yeah. and, and of course, I had my, my, my parents were like, what? <laughs> you know, they, 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 well, I mean, they, but somehow they, they knew I was, I was, I was going to make, uh, make this right. decision. And then I, I I joined up with this with this band uh, 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 the Malcolms the Malcolms yeah all right uh, a theatrical band the the the, the lead singer uh, uh, was a guitar player his name is Rock Battle he used to play in the film The Wall from Pink oh, yeah, Floyd wow. right, right right and he was very humoristic guy like and and very charming guy and he um, his girlfriend was the mother of my girlfriend okay that time. Yeah, right. So, so I was like, you know, 18 years joining a band from from guys who were like 35, 40s, you yeah, know. Right, 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 right. And uh, he called me um, today's superstar, tomorrow's social problem. That was who. who, who. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice line. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a good line, man. That's yeah, good. that's a good line. That's and a song in there, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we had a. a I, I toured with them for half a year in yeah. Germany. Right. I came back with money, so I told my, I, you know, I told my parents like, here, Gilder's yeah, money, yeah. no, Mark's that time because we, uh, yeah. Yeah. look, I, I got money, and, and so they kind of like, you know, changed their mind. and said, well, yeah. maybe he is a musician. Yeah. Yes, I'm a musician. <laughs> I've got parents, parents. I mean, I went through that with my parents as well. You know, I came, came to Europe, uh -huh. came to Holland to right. actually study, you know, one thing and. Uh, the next thing I knew was calling my parents and say, "Listen, uh, I decided I'm gonna stop with the study, became mm -hmm. a musician, right? And never look back. Mm -hmm. Have I uh, don't have any regrets about it. I mean, no, I would do the same thing again if I was in the same position. Same here, same yeah. here. Oh yeah. So. And you've always been been uh, more like, you know, in a live situation. Never, you've never been a teacher or. A teacher, a teacher, a music uh, teacher. I do or teach. Or you do oh yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I I do teach now for like. 10 years I think All right. but I mean it's hard to 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 to, to teach someone um, piano or sing because I never nobody taught me so right. I'm completely self-taught so what uh, there's a lot of people come uh, came up to me they said but, how, but what can you teach me I said well I can teach you how to listen to music or or, or uh, how to uh, improvise and uh, so there are musicians, they come to me and they say, well, okay, uh, there's this wall I, I, I walk uh, against, or can you say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wall with and it's like, uh, I don't know what to do with this song, or I don't know how, you know, or, 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 are there different things I can do on piano? Because this is what they taught me, but what can you teach me? And, th and then, you know, th at that point for me, I'm, th that's my strong, I think that would be my strongest point. Well, you could do this, or you can play it like that, or you can sing it like this, or you can sing it like that. So you know, you I, I try to open people's mind or give, give, give the improvise more. Yeah. Well, exactly. give them more to their vocabulary, the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and uh, and that works. That works, and that's a nice way of teaching because. Absolutely. Yeah, it's about the essence, actually. Yeah. It right? is, and yeah. I learn from them. They learn from me. Um, the only thing is, I'm yeah. Uh, so I'm a vocal coach and mm -hmm. I'm a piano coach. I wouldn't say I'm a, a teacher, but I coach them more. Yeah. And uh, and 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 it works for a lot of people. You know, I, I have people from musicals, and. Of course, they are very like you know. It has to be uh, the song has to be from A to Z. It, from A to Z, it has to be like this. Right. But once you sing a different line, they go like, oh no! Yeah, you know, they it's freak like out. they freak. Yeah, they freak out. <laughs> <laughs> and and there was this guy, uh, an, an Australian guy, and he said, "Man, when I see you doing your sessions, you, 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 you sing about this and that, and then sometimes you just switch to another song. How do you do that? I want to do that too." I said, okay, well, 
I'm willing to teach you that, but uh, you know, it, 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 it will be tough because you know, you are very used to that, you know. The, the structure. Right. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I'm willing to learn. So I took him a couple of times to my sessions and he was like, nervous man he was like you know shitting in his pants almost <laughs> he was like that nervous but he, you know i told him like you know you should uh, what I, what i'm gonna teach you is like s uh, learn to, uh, first i told him like okay learn to sing the song hello from lionel richie so he he sang that song from a to z right totally like the way it was with all the breath yeah, things yeah, right, right, right. and now i said okay now we rewrite the song I'm gonna play hello again, but a totally different scale, different chords, but you have to sing hello. I said, yeah, but that's impossible. I said, no, that's not impossible. You just sing it differently. Yeah, but how? So, so I started like, well, instead of singing, uh, I've, I've been alone with you inside, you know how to Why don't you just start with, I've been alone with you inside my mind, or whatever, you know. Whoa, no, 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 that's that's way too far. No, 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 you can try. Okay. <laughs> I've been alone. He started like, <laughs> anyway, we we ended up like, you know, he felt comfortable in that. Right. Because I told him, you just have to tell the story different. You know, I, I, I just want to hear a different story. Yeah, your interpretation. And, and give right. it your autograph instead exactly. of Lionel Richie's autograph. And exactly. that's what I like for musicians. If they, you're, you're, you're very able to do that. I know that from you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm also self capable of doing that. Self taught, self taught musician. That's what I mean. Well. So, so that yeah. little part, I want to give for myself to someone else who, who, who wants to, uh, you know, yeah. uh, who wants you're, you're the same in, in the coaching as in the life. Uh, your performances, right? I mean, that's that's exactly what you do. So you pass exactly. it on. Yeah, it's a straight line. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the that's amazing. That's the right. message I think I, I, and that's coming back to uh, uh, to to uh, making music. I mean, it's 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 the language you speak, right? And you just want to. Uh, I, I love um, playing with audiences. You know, I just, that's why I I, I I love it when uh, when the, the 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 band plays in. A middle part, like um, that's the this session I did in the, the Panama in Amsterdam, right. in Amsterdam, and I wanted to have the band in the middle, just in the middle in a circle, and I wanted the audience around it, you know, for them to be um, um, part of the whole nucleus. Part, yeah, but right. also for the interaction. Exactly. You know, yeah. Look at look at my. You know, I'm the cook. You're in my kitchen. You can see what I make. You know, this is this, uh, and you're all my ingredients. And and you know. Uh, Let's see how tasty and how uh, how um, uh, uh, hot the song can be, or you know, yeah. spicy and yeah, guess, yeah. and uh, and that's and that's nice because in a way you're not even teaching musicians, but you're also teaching your audience. Exactly. And, and 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 it's a different approach, but it's nice because you know you 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 give the the audience. Uh, um, uh, the possibility to be part of your, be your part of, well, they get they they get to participate in the whole menu, mm -hmm. and, right? And and, and 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 that's what makes the meal complete. That's know? that's it, and 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 that's what it yeah that's what it makes com yeah yeah. Before <laughs> before we go <laughs> <laughs> before we go, buddy, I want to ask you. Uh, <clears throat> we always ask the musicians, you know, if they've had a kind of funny or strange or awkward experience yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, your yeah. career. I'm sure you've had some, just like oh. most of us have. Is there something you want to share with us about Absolutely. those experiences? Absolutely. Um, there was one experience that really blew me off. I, I was totally... Okay, well, this was... Picture this, okay? <laughs> All right. Paris. Beautiful day. Paris, and we were playing in Duc de Lombard, and that was a, a very uh, well-known jazz club. Yeah. Um, with Rosa King, of course. Was that the one? Is that the one in that? It's like you go down and it's one of these old cellar. No, oh, no, 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 okay, no, okay, no. Okay, I yeah. remember. Uh, no, yeah, that no, one. Yeah, yeah. No, this right. was Duc de Lombard. We, uh, we, we were there with, with the time with Steve with the. Uh, you went with us to Paris at once, I think. Yeah, I was there once with you guys as well. Yeah. I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we were doing like um, we were doing Rosa King's favorite song, Georgia, right? Because he was from so, Macon, Georgia. That's right. Yeah. And. Um, and we always had a blast in that in that place. And anyway, she was singing this song like really beautiful, and she had a microphone in her hand. So, Georgia, oh, you know how she sang it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an old sweet song. 
Can you tell you on my mind? Well, she was uh, at, at a certain point we came at a uh, 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 or we came at a point that uh, the guitar player had to take the solo, right? Right, right. And just before she uh, she wanted to give him the solo, the the uh, the cable of the microphone flipped off the microphone <laughs> and, and it <laughs> fell on the floor. But that was okay, yeah, you know. So not, that it that fell happens. down, and happen. she was just looking at the guitar player. And said, solo. So she was like busy getting this cable. And Stefan Jankowski, the guitar player, was like really getting into his solo, and she was like, mm, okay. And she was trying to get this cable in, right? And I was playing piano, and I was just looking at her. I was just looking at what, what she was doing, you know, because she could sometimes, she, she yeah, was yeah. just like, and she was like just trying to get this thing back in the microphone, but I, could, I saw that it didn't work, you know, she was, she was like, mm, okay. But Stefan was ready with his solo, so he looked at her like, <laughs> I'm ready, you know. <laughs> and she was still busy with this cable. Now guess what she did? <laughs> this is what she did. So she, while she was fetching this cable into this, this microphone, she was walking towards the microphone stand, and she was singing in the microphone stand with the microphone here in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, and I was I can picture her doing it. I was looking like <laughs> So I had to laugh so hard. And she said, Rob Jay! Rob Jay! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I couldn't even play. I was like, under my piano, I was playing like this. I was like, <laughs> Can you imagine? In the microphone holder. Oh, fantastic. Fetching this thing. Oh, fantastic. Oh, listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's always a bunch of laughs when we, when we get together, man. And we really enjoyed having you on the show, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, coming out, you know, and, and being here. And uh, if you, uh, all our viewers and listeners, if you want to know more about Roger, please go on our uh, Facebook page, the Rhythm Factory Podcast, or you can send us an email at the Rhythm Factory Podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, also, when you all of our interviews and shows are on YouTube, of course, and please subscribe and click like because we would appreciate that. And the more, the merrier. And uh, we want to, th you know, once again, thanks to Roger and our camera crew, uh, and also to uh, to our uh, uh, promotion crew. And I want to thank my my co-host, Mr. Peter D. Yeah, my name is Eddie C. And we want to leave you with these words, and that is, music is the universal language. No matter where you are, take care. See you next time. Ciao.